forever.
yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, yesterday. at one and of the oppressed yesterday today and forever Jesus Christ Jesus Christ yes Yesterday, today, and forever, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, yesterday. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead, be always with you. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Archbishop George Niederauer died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. On the day of his baptism, he put on Christ. On the day of Christ's coming, may he be clothed with glory. Please join together in singing our processional hymn, All People That on Earth Do Dwell. Cheerful voice. 
Please be seated. On behalf of the Archdiocese of San Francisco, I extend a warm welcome to all of you here as we gather together to pay tribute to our dear friend and brother in Christ, Archbishop George Niederauer, and to commend his soul to his creator that he might receive the reward of a good and faithful servant our Lord promised in which he was. Es mi honor dar la bienvenida a todos ustedes. Nos reunimos aquí para dar honor a la memoria de nuestro querido pastor, el arzobispo George Niederauer, y pedir al Señor su descanso eterno. Sentimos la tristeza de perder a nuestro querido amigo y hermano en Cristo, pero nos reunimos con fe, fe viva y esperanza en la promesa de la vida eterna que el Señor nos da. Extend a special welcome to uh, so many of my brother bishops and our brother priests. Uh, thank you for your presence here. Some of you have come from quite far to uh, be together, and it's a moment of uh, consolation for all of us, and a particular warm welcome to uh, Archbishop's uh, classmates with us today. I extend a welcome as well to uh, the representatives of our many faith communities here in San Francisco. We are blessed to have a very vibrant interfaith council and we uh, have lived a solidarity with our diverse faith communities here for quite some time and this shows through most especially at moments such as this when we come together to console each other at the loss of such a dear friend. In particular, I welcome our dear friend Metropolitan Gerasimos of the Greek Orthodox Metropolis of San Francisco and so many representatives of the LDS Church, especially Elder Whitney Clayton, uh, president of the Quorum of the Seventy, who flew out here from Salt Lake City to be with us today. Thank you so much, Elder Clayton and Elder Jay Pimentel as well, ecclesiastical leader here in Northern California. The representation of so many from your church uh, indicates the warm collaborative relationships that Archbishop Niederauer and yourselves built up during his time as the Archbishop of Salt Lake City. I also wish to extend condolences to all of uh, Archbishop's dear loved ones, and especially to uh, Ann Art Hoffer. Uh, you took such good care of your cousin for some time now as he struggled with different challenges to his health and his mobility. To all of you, his dear friends, and most especially to Cardinal Leveda, very dear, lifelong best friend. There are so many people to whom we owe thanks, uh, beginning with our now recently retired, or we might say emerita, Mary Shembri, our priest's uh, caregiver, for the care that you showed to uh, dear Archbishop Niederauer, and then your whole team who kept watch with him during those final weeks, um, Lori Miller, his executive assistant while he was the Archbishop here in San Francisco, Laura Bertone, director of our uh, Office of Worship for the Archdiocese, and Sister Rosina Conroto, uh, the Archbishop's rep representative to those in the consecrated life. You were at his side constantly, making sure he had company and someone to monitor his visitors. Uh, but most especially, a thanks to the Sisters of Nazareth and the entire staff at Nazareth House. It was a great comfort for us, comfort for us to know how well he was taken care of by you, to know that he was in such good and loving hands. And I was blessed to be able to see that myself during the opportunities I had to visit with him during his final weeks. And I'm very thankful that I had the opportunity to thank him for the great uh, personal support he has shown to me over these years. A special thanks as well to everyone in our archdiocesan staff um, who have worked so hard and worked frantically to uh, make all of the arrangements for these uh, celebrations uh, to, um, for us to come together and, and bid farewell to uh, Archbishop Niederauer. Thanks as well to uh, Linda Asti, the uh, secretary assistant to Archbishop Niederauer and Cardinal Leveda for all of the assistance that you have given over these years. Just by way of an announcement as indicated in your, uh, at the end of your worship aid, there will be a reception downstairs in the Cathedral Event Center to which you are all warmly invited. You are all also welcome if you wish to participate in the committal service at the cemetery. The cortege will depart from here at two o'clock. Again, on behalf of the entire Archdiocese of San Francisco, thank you for your presence here today.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that the soul of your departed servant, Archbishop George, to whom you committed the care of this your family, may with the manifold fruit of his labors enter into the eternal gladness of his Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Lectura del Libro de los Hechos de los Apóstoles En aquellos días, Pedro se dirigió a Cornelio y a los que estaban en su casa con estas palabras. Ahora caigo en la cuenta de que Dios no hace distinción de personas, sino que acepta al que teme al Señor y practica la justicia, sea de la nación que fuere. Él envió su palabra a los hijos de Israel para anunciarles la paz por medio de Jesucristo, Señor de todos. Él nos mandó predicar al pueblo y dar testimonio de que Dios lo ha constituido juez de vivos y muertos. El testimonio de los profetas es unánime, que cuantos creen en él, reciben por su medio el perdón de los pecados. Palabra de Dios. shepherd is the Lord, nothing indeed shall I want. My shepherd is the Lord, nothing indeed shall I want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. My shepherd is indeed shall I want. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. 
with these you give me comfort. My shepherd is the Lord, nothing indeed shall I want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. My shepherd is the Lord, nothing indeed shall I want. Surely goodness and kindness will follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. My shepherd is the Lord, nothing indeed shall I want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, no one lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why then do you judge your brother? Or you, why do you look down on your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us shall give an accounting of himself to God. The word of the Lord.
Alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia. 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 Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. We heard these words proclaimed in the reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Archbishop Niederauer chose to have this reading proclaimed at his funeral mass. When he moved from the residence at Menlo Park to Nazareth House in January, after his diagnosis of interstitial pulmonary disease, an incurable disease that progressively closed down the, his ability of his lungs to provide life-giving oxygen into the blood, he remarked almost casually, well, it looks like this will be my final move. And he was right. A week ago Sunday, April 30th, he marked his 55th anniversary of priestly ordination. He lay in bed with his priest's stole around his neck and stretched out on the bedclothes. 
he concelebrated Mass with me. There was a congregation of four at his bedside, two sisters of Nazareth, Sister Linda and Sister Finton, and two of his faithful caregivers, Laura Bertoni and Mary Shembri. The Gospel reading that day recalled the disciples on the road to Emmaus, who said to their companion, still unrecognized as Jesus, now risen from the dead, stay with us, for evening draws near, and the day is almost done. So for one last time, the priest and bishop George Niederauer once again recognized Jesus in the Eucharistic breaking of the bread. It seems likely to me that the disciple in that Nazareth house bed would have adapted the prayer of those disciples of long ago, praying, yes, Jesus, stay with me now, Jesus, take me home with you. Two days after celebrating his last Holy Mass, we might say that his day was done. On Tuesday morning, May 2nd, he passed into eternal life. As he had lived for the Lord during his 80 years, including his 55 years as a priest, and of these 22 as a bishop, so he died that day for the Lord. During those days of his final illness, he was recollected, patient, alert, visiting with friends who stopped by or called on the phone despite his increasing reliance on round-the-clock oxygen, reading messages that evoked gratitude for the memories they brought back and for the prayers they promised. Of course, he experienced moments of anxiety about his approaching death. Once he asked me, have the doctors told you how long this will take? I had to say they didn't seem to know exactly. He, on the other hand, was a precise man and liked to know things exactly. But he put up with the incertitude since he knew that sooner or later it was the Lord who was calling him home. I cannot exaggerate my sense of edification at his serenity in the face of his imminent death. I extend in particular this morning my condolence to Anne Arthofer at the loss of her dear cousin and good friend. We gather with him today for his last celebration in this beautiful cathedral church, which he had the privilege of calling his liturgical home for the almost seven years of his ministry here as Archbishop, the eighth since the founding of our Archdiocese in 1853. Now it is his memory, not his voice, that speaks to us, reminding us of the promise of Jesus in the gospel of today's Mass. I am going to prepare a place for you, and I will come and take you to myself. This is the great promise and final summons of Jesus, our good shepherd, to the sheep of his flock, to the ones he said as he did to his first apostles, I no longer call you servants, but I call you my friends. If we hear the voice of the good shepherd and do what he commands us, we too can have the sure faith that he will take us to himself. Here is the final witness of this good man, faithful priest and archbishop, who stood in our midst as an icon of Jesus the Good Shepherd. Since his ministry here was a relatively small part of his long life of 80 years, it may console us who knew him over the years to reflect a little on the rich gifts he brought to this final decade of his life and ministry of service here in San Francisco. Born in Los Angeles, he was the only child of George Niederauer and Elaine Sullivan, 
who came to California from their native South Dakota. He was, however, no stranger to San Francisco. Throughout his childhood and youth, the Niederauers often visited his mother's sister, Georgine Sullivan, who worked at one of the city's now shuttered department stores, selling merchandise to the city's famously dressy women. I remember sharing some of those visits during our high school and college years. To understand where our friend got his keen wit and gift for gab, you only had to spend a little time with his family. He was, of course, an excellent student. Throughout his life, he demonstrated a prodigious memory. In these last years, we would occasionally joke about how we had to dredge our memories for the names of people and places that didn't come up on our mental screens until five or 10 minutes too late. But his storehouse of witty sayings never seemed to abandon him. When we celebrated our 80th birthdays last year, he was older by one day. I thought to remind him of the adage, age before beauty. <laughs> I quickly realized my mistake. He quipped back immediately with a fake smile, the Gertrude Stein line, pearls before swine. <laughs> I can assure you I knew I had been put in my place. After getting a PhD in English literature from the University of Southern California, he was assigned to teach English at St. John's Seminary College in Camarillo. For 27 years, half of his 55 years as a priest, he dedicated himself to the formation of future priests for the Archdiocese of Los Angeles and the neighboring dioceses in the Southwest. Not only did he distinguish himself in teaching college English literature, but he was able to indulge his passion for movies, teaching an elective in film appreciation. I once heard one of his former students remark, he never taught a boring class. High praise indeed. He continued his work at the seminary for many years as spiritual director and finally, for five years, as seminary rector. Thus, he was a spiritual director for a generation and more of future priests during their seminary formation, and for many other priests when he became co-director with Jesuit father John McAnulty, with a view to succeeding him as director of the Cardinal Manning House of Prayer for Priests. But God had other plans. His work as spiritual director and rector at the seminary was a great blessing for the church, but it was also a unique preparation for the work of a bishop. So Father Niederauer became Bishop Niederauer, first as Bishop of Salt Lake City for 11 years, and then as Metropolitan Archbishop of San Francisco. When a priest has been chosen as bishop, he is notified by the papal nuncio who calls from the Vatican embassy in Washington to tell him that the Holy Father has appointed him as bishop and asks him for his assent. Usually this news comes as a surprise to the appointee who may ask for time to consider prayerfully this life-changing news. The nuncio, on the other hand, may express a certain reluctance over a possible significant delay in delivering the newly appointed bishop's response to the Vatican's Congregation for Bishops. Perhaps, perhaps the fact that three of the Archbishop's classmates here today, Cardinal Mahoney, Bishop Brown, and myself, were already bishops made it easier for him to resolve any hesitation in accepting. I can imagine his prayer taking this course at some point. Oh well, I suppose I must accept. If those three can do it, it can't be so difficult. <laughs> Perhaps, too, he then asked the three of us to be his consecrating bishop as a silent act of repentance. As bishop, he was much sought after for retreats, especially for brother bishops, for priests, for men and women religious, 
or seminarians. After his retirement at age 76 from the office of Archbishop of San Francisco, he continued his retreat work as Archbishop Emeritus. Last year, by my reckoning, he gave at least, such, at least six such week-long retreats. One could not but admire how meticulous he was in preparing his homilies, classes, talks, and retreat conferences to fit his audience, surprising perhaps for someone who seemed never at a loss for words. These brief recollections can perhaps flesh out too the brittle picture of this good priest and bishop in some secular quarters, where there is often little understanding of or sympathy for someone who sets his heart on spiritual things. Following the urging of St. Paul in his letter to the Colossians, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. For a faithful Christian like Archbishop Niederauer, and we hope like ourselves, we are always challenged to live in the world, but not of it. If, or better when, we meet with incomprehension, even misunderstanding, in our attempts to live by professing the truth in love, as St. Paul urged the Ephesians, perhaps we, like Paul, can take consolation when we recall how Christ, standing before the Roman governor, responded to his question, then you are a king, by saying, for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth, to which Pontius Pilate retorted dismissively, and what is truth? Archbishop George Niederauer lived his 80 years applying the truth of the gospel to his own life as a Christian, and as priest and bishop preaching and teaching others to join him on this journey. He did so with great intelligence, laced with good humor. I think all of us who knew him would agree that he loved to laugh and to see us laugh with him. He used the many gifts God gave him to great good effect, and we thank God for lending him to us for this long while. Last Sunday was the fourth of the Easter season when we celebrate with great joy the bodily resurrection of Jesus from the tomb where he was placed after undergoing capital punishment by hanging on a cross until he died. The theme of the fourth Sunday is taken from the gospel reading about Jesus who told his disciples, I am the good shepherd. Every priest and bishop is ordained with the image of the good shepherd as his model, even, no, especially in the sense of giving his life for the sake of his flock. On Good Shepherd Sunday, the Office of Readings in the Liturgy of the Hours has a homily given by Pope St. Gregory the Great at the end of the sixth century. It seemed to me made for today. Dear brothers and sisters, Gregory said, let us set out for the green pastures of eternity where we shall keep joyful festival with so many of our fellow citizens. Let us stir up our hearts, rekindle our faith, and long eagerly for what heaven has in store for us. No matter what obstacles we encounter, we must not allow them to turn us aside from the joy of that heavenly feast. Nor must we allow the charm of success to seduce us, or we shall be like a foolish traveler who is so distracted by the pleasant meadows through which he is passing that he forgets where he is going. Dear Archbishop Niederauer, you yourself epitomized Gregory's moving homily by your life and ministry among us. You never forgot where you were going, and we shall never forget the good example you have given us. We thank you, and we thank God for you. Requiescat in pace. Amen. Alleluia.
Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, we join our prayers to his. In baptism, George received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy. Our, prayer. Our brother George was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Archbishop George shared in the priesthood of Jesus Christ, leading God's people in prayer and worship. Bring him into your presence, where he will take his place in the heavenly liturgy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love, and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who bear the cross of pain or illness, particularly Archbishop John Raphael Quinn, that they may never feel forsaken by God, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all those whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The family and friends of George seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain, and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother George. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, who through your goodness we have received the bread of life. With the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice for the praise of the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
Accept, O Lord, that we pray the sacrificial gifts we offer for the soul of your servant, Archbishop George Niederauer, that as you accorded him the pontifical dignity in this world, so you may command him to be admitted to the company of your saints in the heavenly kingdom, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we are claimed. <laughs> Santo, Santo, Santo es el Señor, Dios te lo Llenos están el cielo y la tierra de tu gloria, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. Bendito el que viene el nombre del Señor, Hosanna en el cielo, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Therefore, Lord, we pray, in indeed, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, and order our days in your peace. Command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. Por tu cruz y resurrección nos has salvado, Señor. Por tu cruz y resurrección nos has salvado, Señor. <clears throat> Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, 
the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. And bid us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, por los cilios de los cilios. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your
Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Cristo, amen, la sangre del Señor, eating your body, drinking your blood, we become what we receive, amen, amen. Amen, we remember your dying and your rising. Amen, y contigo, Señor, resucitamos. Amen. Amen, el cuerpo de Cristo. Amen, la sangre del Señor, eating your body, drinking your blood, we become what we receive, amen, amen. Amen. Now we offer the sacrifice you gave us. Amen. Te ofrecemos, Señor, todo lo que somos. Amen. Amen. El cuerpo de Cristo. Amen. La 
sangre del Señor, eating your body, drinking your blood, we become what we receive. Amen. 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 Lord, you make us one body and one spirit. Amen. En tu cuerpo, Señor, un pueblo santo. Amen. Amen. El cuerpo de Cristo. Amen. La sangre del Señor. Eating your body, drinking your blood, we become what we receive. Amen. 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 We find you when we serve the poor and lowly. Amen. A tu mismo servimos en los pobres. Amen. Amen, el cuerpo de Cristo. Amen, la sangre del Señor. Eating your body, drinking your blood, we become what we receive. Amen. Amen. Cristo. Amen. La sangre del Señor. In your body, in your blood, we become what we receive. Amen. Amen.
custodes aurora. Stellet is laer in
Let us pray. <clears throat> May your merciful kindness, which we have implored, O Lord, benefit the soul of your departed servant, Archbishop George, that by these sacrificial gifts he may know the eternal company of Christ, in whom he hoped and whom he preached, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
Our brother George has fallen asleep in Christ. Confident in our hope of eternal life, let us commend him to the loving mercy of our Father and let our prayers go with him. He was adopted as God's son in baptism and was nourished at the table of the Lord. May he now inherit the promise of eternal life and take his place at the table of God's children in heaven. Let us pray also on our own behalf that we who now mourn and are saddened may one day go forth with our brother to meet the Lord of life when he appears in glory. I know that my Redeemer lives, and on the last day I shall rise again. In my body I shall look on God my Savior. In my body I shall look on God my Savior. I myself shall see him, my own eyes will gaze on him, my own eyes will gaze on him. In my body I shall look on God my Savior, in my body I shall look on God my Savior. This is the hope I cherish, this is the hope I cherish in my heart. In my body I shall look on God my Savior, in my body I shall look on God my Savior. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother George in the sure and certain hope that together with all those who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon George in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, Turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. Please join together in singing our recessional hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King.